The second part of this lecture involves predicting solution pH. We're not going to worry about calculating it out for the weak acids and the bases. We're going to merely try to figure out if a solution is acidic, basic, or neutral. First, I want to review the reactions of acids and bases in water. For the top reaction, we have an acid in water. In water, acids react to give up their proton and make hydronium. So the pH of acidic solutions would be less than 7. When bases react with water, they take the proton, leaving behind hydroxide. So when you have hydroxide in solution, the pH is greater than 7. Here is a list of pHs of some common materials. I'm sure you realize your stomach is very acidic, and you notice that very sour things like lemon juice, vinegar, and grapefruit juice are also acidic. You've seen the video where water exposed to air absorbs carbon dioxide to give carbonic acid and an acidic pH. Your saliva is a little bit acidic as well, as is milk. Your blood is buffered at a slightly basic pH. It's all those phosphates involved in ATP and ADP. Tears are a little bit basic, which might be why the eyes get puffy. And if you need an antacid because your stomach is upset, like milk of magnesia, these have higher pHs. Windex used to contain ammonia and was very basic. Another very basic household product is dishwasher detergent. So here is your first question. We're going to learn by applying. If you put sodium hypochlorite in water, what would the solution be? Well, we know it will break up into cation and anion. Sodium is not on the acid-base chart. But what about hypochlorite? Where can we find that? Hypochlorite is right here in the base column. So I am sure you can figure out the pH of the solution. How about another one? This one you can't find on the acid-base table, but its first element is hydrogen. What does that usually mean? Here is another example, sodium perchlorate. In solution, this breaks up into sodium ion, which is not on the acid-base table, and the perchlorate ion, which is. But let's look at where it is on the acid-base table. We can see that the perchlorate ion is the conjugate base of a very strong acid. It is in the region of bases very unlikely to grab a proton. Maybe you remember an early example with chloride ion and its ability to act as a base in water. Please choose a letter. How about sodium hydrogen sulfate? This will break up into sodium ion and hydrogen sulfate ion. Let's see where this might be on the acid-base table. You will find it in two places, as a weak acid or an extremely weak base. How about calcium hydroxide in water? This has some solubility to make calcium 2 plus ion and hydroxide ion. Where is hydroxide on the acid-base table? I'll let you check. This is a question of comparing materials, and we would like to know which solution has the lower pH. So that means we're looking for the solution that has the most hydronium ion. We have two concentrations of acid. Do you think the lower concentration of acid or the higher concentration of acid would make more hydronium. This one wants to know which solution has the lower pH, and you're given the hydronium concentration and the hydroxide concentration. So you may have to go back to the earlier part of this lecture to determine the pH of both solutions. For this next question, we want to know which solution has the lower pH, this could mean the solution with the most hydronium, but since we are dealing with bases here, 
Maybe we should think about which solution has the least hydroxide. We have two bases. Will the lower concentration or the higher concentration have the least amount of hydroxide? Here is another question regarding lower pH. The solution with the lower pH will have more hydronium or less hydroxide. And we should think about hydroxide since we are dealing with bases. Let's look up where sulfate and sulfite are on the acid-base table. We can see that sulfite is a stronger base than sulfate. So if you want less hydroxide, do you want the stronger base or the weaker base? And our last question, this time we are dealing with acids and we are given the pKa. So the lower pH will have the most hydronium, which means it will be the strongest acid. So which one of these pKa's says strongest acid? The lower pKa or the higher pKa? Finally, here is a question to help you out with a homework question. We want to be able to rank the solutions below from lowest pH to highest pH. And we have two mystery acids. H-alpha has a pKa of 3.2 and H beta has a pKa of 5.1. Our solutions contain acids and salts, which are the bases. It helps me to remember that the stronger acid has the lower pKa. So I'm going to set this up like your acid base table, where strong acids are on the upper left and weaker acids are on the lower left. We know that A and B, which are acidic, are going to be lower in pH than C and D. And I hope you realize that since H alpha has the lower pKa, it is the stronger acid. So it will have the low pH, and H beta will have the higher acidic pH. Now, a word about conjugates. The stronger acid has the weaker conjugate base, and the weaker acid has the stronger conjugate base. So our conjugate base solutions will be above pH 7. Which one has a lower pH? The one with weaker base or stronger base? Well, I hope you say to yourself, the weaker base makes less hydroxide. So the lithium salt of acid alpha is going to have the lower pH, which is still above 7, and the lithium salt of acid beta is going to have the higher pH. So here's our final ranking. B, A, D, C. Or H alpha, H beta, alpha minus, beta minus. So this completes chapter 12.